they left Bethlehem and uh, with her husband and her two sons and they moved to Moab during the time of famine and they stayed there for a while and the sons married Moabite women uh, Malon to Ruth and Kilon to Orpah it's Orpah not Oprah okay. <laughs> and uh, they lived there for 10 years and uh, in this time in those 10 years Two tragic things happen. Now let's see what the Bible says in Ruth chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. It says this. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about 10 years, both Malon and Kilian also died. And Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. See, friends, all the men in their lives died. Naomi's husband, um, Elimelech, and her two sons, Malon and Kilion. And another tragic thing happened, and that is the sons did not have children. And so both Orpah and Ruth were barren for ten years. And so she didn't have any inheritance, uh, no children. And so when they all died, Naomi was left with her two daughters-in-law. That must have been devastating for a mother, I'm sure. Imagine the love of her life, you know, not only to lose her husband, but even her two only sons that she lost. Notice that the scripture even emphasized. It said, Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. And it shows us that kind of grief that she would have experienced and the, and the, and, and the uh, sense of uh, being alone. And they were the ones that brought joy in her life. They were family. That's why Naomi can declare this. And look what it says in Ruth chapter 1. Verse 21, it says, I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. She felt that emptiness of being by herself. So what do you do when you hit rock bottom? You know, Orpa and Ruth also experienced loss in their lives when they both lost their husband. How do you cope with life's most difficult uh, circumstances uh, when when it seems that you have lost all hope now remember that in those days that it was normal for uh, wives to be able to stay at home and husbands would go out and work uh, and provide for their home and so you can imagine when you lose a husband you are basically hopeless and helpless and uh, you could become destitute but with God, nothing is over until God says it's over. Yeah. Amen? Amen? The Lord can turn any situation to bring good and fulfill your destiny. Here's what the Bible says in Romans 8.28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. I want to encourage you today. That not everything is good. Things don't look good. Maybe there are times when it's really bad. So things don't look good, but God can turn it for good. Amen. According to His purpose, because He will fulfill the destiny that you have in your life. When we look at the life of Naomi, in the beginning we see a woman that was broken, devastated with grief. Feeling alone, without family. At the end, we see that passage that we read a while ago. At the end, we see her proudly embracing her grandchild. When we look at Ruth, in the beginning, we see a woman who lost her husband. She was barren and hopeless. But at the end, we see a woman whom the Lord has favored with a wonderful husband, Boaz, and then she became fruitful 
out of your womb came the line of David and ultimately the Messiah, Jesus. Wow, what a story. I want us to look at what these women did and how they turned from their despair to their destiny. First of all, Naomi turned to the Lord as her source of strength and provision. Naomi turned to the Lord as her source of strength and provision. See, Naomi heard that the Lord is providing in Bethlehem where she came from. So she decided to go back. Now, I want to uh, read the scripture in Ruth chapter 1, verse 6 to 7. It says, when Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her daughter, two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. You know, it made sense for her to go back to her roots. To go back to the basic, which was to put her faith back in the Lord. Not in her abilities, not in her things that she could do, but to go back to her Lord. See, with friends, we all face challenges and difficulties in our lives, uh, whatever season that we are in. Sometimes they're overwhelming. And it feels like sometimes that we will, we will feel hopeless and, and helpless. But friends, sometimes it may, be, it may be so simplistic, but it is in those times that we need to remember to go back to our roots of faith. In those difficult moments, in the times that we feel helpless, that's not the time to start scrambling to try and find ways that you can do things, but to go back to your faith in God. <laughs> Naomi came from Bethlehem. She was an Israelite, and she had moved to Moab with her husband and two so uh, two and, and her two sons. And Moab was not her home. In fact. The Moabites became the enemies of Israel. They worshiped many gods, including Baal. I want you to look at the scripture in Numbers 25, verse 1 to 3. It says this. While Israel was staying in Shittim, the men began to indulge in sexual immorality with Moabite women, who invited them to the sacrifices to their gods. The people ate the sacrificial meal and bowed down before these gods. So Israel yoked themselves to the Baal of Peor, and the Lord's anger burned against them. See, so you see there's a history of the Moabite women who seduced the children of God uh, and invited them to worship and make sacrifices to their gods, including Baal. And so the Lord was angry with, uh, with them for doing that. Perhaps that's what might have happened. That the two sons have married two Moabite women. And uh, friends, this is the situation that Naomi found herself in. She was in a different land with two Moabite women. And so she, begins to, she began to go back to her faith. Having lost her husband and two sons, Naomi turned to what she knew, and that was her faith in the Lord. So she went back to her family of God where everyone knew her. Thank God for the family of God. Amen. Where we can go back and, you know, when, when you go and do your thing and, and you know, and, and you go through the struggles of life, um, thank the Lord that there is still the family of God where you can go home to. Amen. Where people can encourage you in your faith. Do you know that you have a family of God? And that's what exactly happened to Naomi. That she went back to her home. Where she was familiar. Where people can give her encouragement. And she can go to that family of God that will encourage her. 
And so, praise God. You know, it talks about the, the Moabite, uh, Moabites have other gods. It talks about so many different gods. But you know that in our times, we also have many gods. <coughs> you know, and, and people who would anything that you would put before God is a god. It could be money is a god. It could be career is a god. It could be, you know, uh, uh, the things that you pursue. It could be a hobby. And uh, those things could become gods. You know, go pursuing those things and putting them before God. That's why the first commandment says, do not put any god before him. And that is, you know, things in life could become gods. And so we're encouraged today that you know, when these things happen, and uh, there are many gods that are taking us and distracting us, it's time to go back to the Lord. Amen. 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 Go back to the family of God, yes. where we are encouraged once again. So she went back to her family, and that move changed her destiny. Just that move. She could have stayed in Moab, where her husband uh, died and her two sons died. I mean, some people do that. They stay where, you know, their their family has been buried. And she could have stayed there, but that was not God's will for her. There may be some of us who are here today, and perhaps even mothers, that are going through a very difficult time. Remember that the Lord is here for you. I want you to know today that he is your strength and he is your provider. I want to encourage you that God is with you no matter what the circumstance you're in. Don't remain in your despair. But make a decision to turn to the Lord and change your destiny. Friends, as a mother, your decision will affect your family. As we have heard, some of the testimonies of the young people, that the sacrifices of their mothers and the things that they have done have affected the next generation. See, Ruth also turned to the Lord. Even though she didn't know the God of Israel, she turned to the Lord. And that decision changed her destiny. She wanted to make sure that they would be fine. She cared about them and treated them as her own daughters. She wanted them to be happy, to have a husband that can provide for them. So she told them to go back to their mother in Moab. I want you to see this in scripture in Ruth chapter 1, verse 8 to 9. It says this. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husband and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you find rest in the home of another husband. So she even blessed them. She wanted the best for them. She, she was willing to release them to go back to their mothers. And maybe, perhaps, they will find joy in finding a husband in living happily ever after. So with that, Arpah kissed her goodbye, and she went on her own way. But Ruth didn't want to leave. Ruth didn't want to go, and it's obvious that Naomi lived a life that demonstrated her faith in the Lord. Why? Because Ruth saw it and wanted what she had. I'm sure that over the years that they lived together, when they were together, I'm sure that Naomi was practicing her faith while she was in Moab and she was with Moabite women who had other gods and yet here was a woman of God probably practicing her faith and so Ruth saw that to the point that it made an impact in her life. And so she was she, uh, she, she wanted to stay. She wanted what Naomi had. Even though Naomi urged her to go, to go back to her mother and to her people like her sister-in-law, 
she was still willing to stay. Look at what the scripture says in Ruth chapter 1, verse 15 to 17. I love this part where it says this. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. Wow, what a statement. I mean, she was willing to not even go to her own mother and stay with this mother-in-law. You know, she was so impacted that she wasn't willing to be separated from her. Even death will be the one that can only separate them. Friends, mothers, sometimes you may feel that your life and faith is not making a difference. Maybe there are times when you feel like you've been sharing it, you've been telling your children, you've been telling people, but it just doesn't seem like it's working. It doesn't seem like they're understanding what you're saying. Maybe you've tried to bring them to church. Maybe you have expressed your faith to them. But somehow it's just not coming, uh, you know, and, and they're just not following what you're saying. But I want to encourage you today that in the midst of all of that, even though you're doing that, I want you to know today that there could be a roof around you. <laughs> you know, that those around you sometimes may not really care about what you are imparting to them, but you will be surprised that there is a roof that wants to walk with you. Who wants what you have? Orpa went in her own merry way to her people and her gods to do her own thing. But, and, and to Orpa, by the way, she was just basically a mother-in-law. That's what all she was. There was really no relationship. She was a mother-in-law. There was nothing more that they had because the son that had the relationship was gone. So there was nothing left there. But Ruth was different. Ruth was different because Naomi was like a mom to her. This is interesting because sometimes, listen, sometimes I hear that mothers don't get along with their daughter-in-law. I, I just hear that. I don't know. Sometimes. Okay. Uh, but Naomi, but for the children of God, it's different because Naomi's genuine care and faith all right in god attracted ruth all right it attracted ruth i'm sure naomi treated them both the same you know she she loved both of them she cared for both of them she gave them both opportunities even in this time of in her season she gave them both the same opportunity but she received two different responses one established a relationship and the other didn't. Moms, don't get discouraged in sharing your faith and giving of yourselves. I encourage you today. There are those who will not see what you see and what you are giving to them. They don't see the value of what you're trying to share to them. But there will be people, maybe a daughter, Maybe a daughter-in-law or son-in-law or a son or a spiritual son who will love you for what you have instilled in them. Amen. I would encourage you. You have inspired them to the point that, that they want to journey with you. <laughs> where they can say, where you go, I will go. Well, where, you know, where you stay, I will stay. Well, your people will be my people and your God will be my God. I just want you to take me to the land of blessing. I want to journey with you. They want you to take them to their destiny of blessing. Friends, if it weren't for Naomi, Ruth would have
would have continued to be barren all her life. If it wasn't for Ruth, uh, for Naomi, she would have lived an insignificant life. Ruth would have remained the same, insignificant, but instead, she was instrumental to the line of David and the Messiah. Ruth's life became very significant. In fact, it was so significant, a whole book was written about her. Imagine that. That your life is so significant, somebody writes a book about you. Isn't that amazing? All because Naomi was willing to be used by God. Imagine that a mother would just give her, give her uh, herself up, even for a, a daughter-in-law, not even related to her, to give them opportunity, even a book written about them. Let them be significant. And you know, it's a mother who was more interested with the future of her daughter than her own. And I know there are many mothers like that. That you're more concerned about the future of your children than your own. That you've made the sacrifices where you are. Because you love them and you care for them. And you are willing to forego your own desires so that they will fulfill their destiny. I want to encourage you today. Don't give up on doing what you're doing. Friends, moms... When you demonstrate your faith to your children, you will never know the impact that you will have in the generations to come. Yeah. Look what Paul said, the apostle, to his spiritual son, Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5 says this. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother, Louis, and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Imagine that, starting from the grandmother, the grandmother Lewis who had faith, and that faith was passed on to her daughter, who is Eunice, and that faith was passed on to her son, who is Timothy, who became the spiritual son of the Apostle Paul. What a great legacy. All because of a mother who was willing to pass on her faith. See, friends, godly mothers can pass on their faith and secure the destiny and the future of their children and the generations to come. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> it will fulfill the destiny of future generations. And You know, I am blessed with my own mom. <clears throat> Uh, she's gone to be with the Lord who instilled in me the values of family and showing love and affection and the virtue of generosity. I received that from her and I'm blessed because of that. I'm also blessed to have lived with my mother-in-law. Some of you have probably met her, Mama Luz. Right? She, you know, I was blessed that she lived with us all through the time that my children were born and she saw them all grow up. I'm blessed that she was there with us. And because of her faith, actually, Elby found the Lord. <coughs> it was her who shared the faith that for her to look for the people of God. And she found faith. Not only did she found faith, but she found a husband <laughs> that is so noble. Like a Boaz. <laughs> it, it will be her turn in Father's Day. So. <laughs> but you see, friends, my mother-in-law helped us raise our children while serving the Lord. Little did they know that the impact of the life, their life. I'm sure both of them now, our both mothers are now smiling uh, to see their grandchildren who've risen up serving God, pastoring and you know, worship leader and, and people who are advancing the kingdom of God. 
They would have never known that. I wish they were here to be able to see that. But what they have done has allowed generations. And so I want to encourage you, mothers and grandmothers, the sacrifices that you make. <coughs> Sometimes it means, it seems so insignificant. It seems like it's so small. Maybe there are times when you have to look after the, the baby and the children so that you can release them to serve God. I want you to know that that little thing that you do can impact the generations to come. And so friends, and now they have great grandchildren, a spiritual legacy because of, of a mom who turned to the Lord and secured the future of her family. So I encourage you wives, don't hinder your husbands serving the Lord. Just a word of caution. And to you that are mothers, moms, don't hinder your children from serving the Lord. Instead of taking them to the malls and the outing and going here and there away from missing church, why not take them to church? And they can receive direction for their lives. <laughs> Friends, in 25 years of ministry, I have seen mothers that we have walked with, that I've seen them have raised up their children and bring their children to the Lord and, and, and encourage them to come to church and, 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 and make sacrifices so that they can bring them. And I've seen them rise up and even the young generation and those that are preaching now and it's advancing the kingdom of God and their lives are in order. And yet I have seen others who have not done that in their lives and they have taken their children here and outing there and, and they have missed, uh, you know, uh, receiving from the Lord and, and now they've grown up and they wonder why. What happened to their children? They wonder why they're out of order. They wonder why they have gone away from God. Well, friends, the values you instill in them now will bear fruit for generations to come and secure the future of your family. You can only do legacy one time. You only have one chance. You can't do it again. We can't say, well, I have kind of messed it up. Let me just repeat this whole thing. And, and, and let me begin again a, a, a legacy. Once it's done, you can't repeat and rewind the tape. It's over. The, the time to do that is now. To be able to, to instill the values of faith and encourage our next generation, this is the time. And you know what? God is a God of second chances. We can start now just as Naomi and Ruth started. And from that time they began. And God gave them a chance to be able to do that. Remember that Ruth was even away from God. She was not an Israelite. She was a Moabite. But she had an opportunity to know the God that, that Naomi knew. That she could have that faith in God and, and begin her life that way. And from that time she was... God used her to be able to raise up a generation. And we know that out of her came King David. And out of her came the Messiah, Jesus. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Coming from a negative to a wonderful legacy. So don't give up. Giving of yourself so that your family will know God. If you've been doing that, that's great. Continue on. Grandmoms, like Lewis, your faith will impact your grandchildren. Amen. Be a good woman. Amen. 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 And continue on with your faith. Because God can use you to impact the next generation. And thirdly, Ruth chose to follow God's will. Ruth chose to follow God's will. Ruth will be the, the next generation for the daughters that are here 
who will become mothers as well. I mean, choose to follow God. Although Orpah and Ruth received the same opportunity to go back to their people and, and worship their God, Ruth decided to follow the true God. She was not going to go back to the other gods again. She was not going to go back to doing the same thing that she was doing before. This time she said, I'm going to follow the true God. She lived an empty life in Moab. She had been barren throughout the years of marriage with Naomi's son. But when she committed herself to the God of Israel, her life took a turn. She began to bear fruit. Ruth had a choice to stay in Moab where her husband died and go back to worshiping their other gods. But by faith, she left her homeland and God gave her a new home. And friends, she followed the advice of her godly mother-in-law. In simple trust, she went out to the harvest fields hoping to find someone and she found favor in the eyes of Boaz. You're looking for someone to spend the life your life with. Find the Boaz in the harvest field. In other words, if you're looking for someone, find someone who is following God. Friends, Seeking to follow God's leading, she married Boaz and bore a son through whom the Messiah came to redeem the world. Here's what the story says in Ruth chapter 4, verse 13. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. When he made love to her, the Lord enabled her to conceive and she gave birth to a son. And friends, from a life of barrenness, God brought her through faith to great fruitfulness. From despair to destiny. God is a God of second chances. Amen? Amen. Following God's will involved a relationship with her mother-in-law, Naomi, who became her spiritual mother. Naomi was not just her mother-in-law. She had a deeper relationship because of her faith in God. Ruth recognized that Naomi uh, was a woman of God, that she followed all that she asked her to do. The result of that was a life of fruitfulness and blessing. Friends, this shows us that when we follow the example of our godly mothers and choose to do God's will, we will see the fruitfulness in our life. We will never see our destiny fulfilled if we will not follow God's will for our lives. And so this afternoon, I want to encourage all of you now, keep doing what you're doing in faith. Amen. Even though you may go through seasons of difficulty and challenges and it feels like it's not going anywhere, but I want you to know God sees what you're doing and He will raise up a roof will walk with you and be able to bring from you a great blessing and that generations can be impacted because of your faith in God. So today, be encouraged, mothers. I want to encourage you to allow God to use you for the fulfillment of His purpose. May you walk in your destiny. Don't allow your despair, your circumstances to hold you back from passing on to the next generation and making an impact and making a difference to others. But instead, make a decision to follow God Amen. and allow your life to be a blessing to the next generation. Amen. May you walk in your destiny that out of you will come great men and women of faith. Amen. You will see that today. So I want to pray for you all, the mothers here. I want to encourage you and I want to declare a word to you today. So I'm going to ask all the mothers, instead of an altar call, this will be our altar call. We're going to call all the mothers to come to the altar here. Please come.
Will you please stand? All the mothers that are here today, can you please come and come up here to the altar? Please come.
You have given of yourself so that the children can be raised up to follow them. Thank you so much. And we want to just pray for them. Can you extend your hands to them? To what we will pray for them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up to you all these moms that are here at the altar. Thank you, Lord, for their lives. We thank you, Lord, for their sacrifices and their care for their family. And so, Lord, today we pray that you will continue to give them strength. That, God, that you will watch over their lives. Lord, in their sleeping, in their waking, that you will watch over them. In their going in and out of their home, you will watch for them. And, God, that you will keep them away from harm and sickness. And that, God, that you will protect their life. And that, Lord, I pray that they will not lack anything, but, Lord, that you will provide every need in their life. Their emotional need, their physical needs, Lord, their material needs. God, you are their provider, and you are their sustainer. And we pray today, Lord, that you will surround them with children and family who will love them and appreciate them. And we pray, Lord God, that you will continue to use them to be a channel of your blessing, that out of them, many more men and women of God will have faith to advance the kingdom of God. And so, Lord, we commit all these moms to you, and we pray that your richest blessings be upon them. May they walk under an open heaven. May the wealth and riches be in their house. And, Lord, we commit them into your hands now, and we give you all the glory.